from the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. And beaming out across all of space and time, this is Star Talk, where science and pop culture collide. I'm your host, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an astrophysicist at the American Museum of Natural History's Hayden Planetarium. And I've got with me my co-host, Eugene Merman. Eugene, thanks Hello. for being here. It's great to give be me, here. Give me some love for Eugene. Yeah. Eugene, professional comedian. And uh, today, you know what our topic is? Science fiction. Science fiction movies. Yeah. You got any favorite movies? I love I love time travel uh, because there are ways to do time travel that are like astrophysically legitimate. Yes. Yeah. 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 And while those are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'll watch a time travel thing and be like, pretty realistic. Tonight we're featuring my interview with Christopher Nolan. Mm hmm Christopher Nolan. He came through town. Yeah. And I snared him, put him in my office. Uh huh. His most recent movie is Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah. Where it's more it's not only time and space, it's especially Relativity. Now yeah. I know some relativity. I don't count myself as an expert in relativity. We, I got. I have to reach out into the ether to find yeah. such people, and we did just that with my special guest, Jana Levin. Jana, welcome to Star Talk. Thank uh, you. Yeah. So glad to be there. <laughs> so, uh, so you're a full-fledged cosmologist, and people like pay yeah. you to do this. Yeah, yeah. You, I get paid to do relativity. To do relativity. Yeah. You think about black holes and yep. the birth of the universe. Yep. Jana, what is time? <laughs> that, in, simple. Well, yeah, one <laughs> sentence or less. Ever. Yeah, it's it is actually one of the most elusive aspects of physics. Like, there's this or idea life. or of life, Not just right? Physics. Psychologically. Yeah. But even physically, we know that there is this sort of clock. The clock never stops. We never turn around and go back. We can never accidentally go the wrong direction in time. It's always pushing us forward. And yet we sort of imagine it almost spatially. We almost imagine it like a dimension. But I can't look forward in that dimension the way I can look left. And I can't turn around and look back in that dimension the way I can look right, right? And so, so that aspect of why time is different from a dimension remains sort of persistently okay. confusing. So then now we start twisting time. Mm -hmm. And no one thought to do that until Einstein, I guess. Is, is that a fair, a fair characterization? I mean, people may have imagined it culturally, but it wasn't actually on the table as a viable possibility in, until Einstein. And it is a viable possibility. We know that my clock can run differently from your clock and that there can be a difference between not only our psychological perception of time, but our biological perception of time. But 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 our clocks are not going to run differently if we're in the same place at the same time. No, no, they're not. No. But if you're in two different places, yeah, then you have to ask what's different about those if, two places. If I'm so, higher up in a building, if I'm in the space station, if I'm near a black then, hole, my clock will run differently than yours. The further away I am from the Earth, the um, you know the faster my clock will appear to run relative to yours. So if I go to a black hole and have a sandwich and then come right back, yeah. how long will it Civilization have Civilization has come and gone. It'll, it'll all be gone. Yeah. <laughs> so if you fold relativity into a storytelling narrative, mm -hmm. now time can be legitimately altered and warped. Sure. For the purposes of, of your, story of your plot lines. In the film, yeah. they go near a black hole. Yeah. Close enough to a black hole that the strength of gravity is so high. Yes. That time goes so slowly. Yes. That, what is it, one hour at this black I hole planet like is like 20 years. years. Or something like that. Let's zoom in on my conversation with Christopher Nolan about the relativity of time. You look at relativity itself, insofar as I can understand it, you know, and insofar as I try and you know, explain it to the audience what they need to know. It's all mind blowing. All it's mind blowing. I mean, the idea that time can run differently for you depending on how fast you're moving or where you are in the universe, whatever. That, that's incredible. I mean, truly. Yeah, incredible. and and I think you took it to an extreme point, which no one had done before. I don't think I'm giving too much of the film away when I say, uh, where you visit a planet that's in a very deep gravitational well. We mm. say, and the closer you are to a strong source of gravity, the slower your time ticks relative to people you left at home. Yeah. And so if you're going to commit to a visit of a planet where time is ticking more slowly, then you've got to be prepared for the consequences of that. How much more slowly is it ticking? Yeah. And what are the age of your kids relative to you when you go back yeah. and, and Well, find before them? I go down there, Bran, uh, Anne Hathaway's character has a line, you know, she says, we've got to view time like a, as a resource, like oxygen. As a commodity. Food, yeah. exactly. And I, I just... I thought it was that just was a, a great cool line. idea. That was a good, that, that was a great line. <laughs> yeah. So 
So here we have a time moving at different rates for different people. What's the biggest thing that's near the Earth that would have this effect in a way that you'd really notice? Like, is it Jupiter, or would it have to be the Sun, or oh, is there... That's an interesting question. I mean, I've never thought about whether they could do it for the Moon. I mean, maybe... It depends on how precise your clock is, really. That's really You the know what they do it for? Me. GPS yeah. satellites yeah. are farther away from Earth than you are, right? Agreed. And... Ag agree? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, in fact, experience a faster passage of time mm -hmm. than we do. But they're sending time signals to your smartphones. Mm -hmm. And that time signal they send you is correct. How do you get the correct time if they have the wrong time? Because we knew in advance what the effects of relativity would be on the GPS satellite system. And we pre-correct the time that they send down to us so that when it gets to here on Earth, you have the correct time. And that is general relativity manifest in our, in, in, in our civilization today. What are wormholes good for? You have one? <laughs> yeah, you know, wormholes, although they're probably theoretically possible, are physically, as far as we know, still impossible. Meaning to keep the throat open of the wormhole, you need forms of matter and energy that we've never seen before. We don't know anything that could actually keep the throat open of the wormhole. So, so it'll kind of keep closing up. So that would it's, be it's bad. unstable. It's very meaning, unstable. Meaning, <laughs> if we made a wormhole, we couldn't keep it open, but we also can't make wormholes. Yeah. Well, so if a wormhole, <laughs> 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 if a wormhole was formed by mm -hmm. some unstable process, it would quickly close. When you say it would close quickly, how long? Like, meaning, how long would it oh, stay like, open? Like, seconds or like, like microseconds? Microseconds. Or... <laughs> so the, I think the question isn't can we make them, but the question is: Is there any form of energy in the universe that's capable of keeping a wormhole sort of afloat and and I, we don't know the answer to that question we, we, didn't, power? we didn't predict dark energy there are forms of energy that are surprising to us so, so we have to be of a civilization that has power over space time and energy and matter mm -hmm. that we are not quite yet yeah and perhaps in that future civilization yeah we can manipulate the fabric of space and time I and make wormholes if we're going to so what came first the <laughs> what the thing you said first or wormholes? the sci-fi yeah. no, so i think we'd be better off manipulating space and time by for instance doing something like warp drive so you could do something like warp drive by contracting space time between two points bringing them closer together jumping across you don't have to travel you know 400 light so years that's not a wormhole that's not a wormhole and then pushing well, it back out again well, well, wait, wait. and then you push it back out again no big deal it's not a yeah. No, I want to fight about this. <laughs> okay. No, no, you're going to warp space and then go from one part of space to the other. And then you jump across and then you push How it back out. How are you jumping again. across? How are you... In uh, in it, a, it, with so, a space pogo stick. Yeah. <laughs> what the, no, no. Well, you could you could just step right across if you can pull them closer. Okay, together. you have to step out of your dimension and back in. Well, you could do all of this even in three dimensions. Just pull two space time points closer. Now, now again, it has the same problem, which is that I don't know forms of matter or energy that would do it. But that's warp drive in principle. And so, if you imagine that there's something called dark energy, which you know very well, which causes the universe to expand at a very accelerated rate. Yes. That's one way to push it back out again. If you could come up with a form of energy that did the opposite, that pulled hold it together, much like dark energy does, right? But oh, in the opposite okay. direction, causing the collapse of space <laughs> in like, one like, like, direction. Like, Neil, what you're saying is true. So, uh, you see, trust whole, me on the science, Neil. So the reason why this is imperative <laughs> is that you can travel across a very short distance going less than the speed of light, and that's very important. And then the space time is able to expand faster than the uh, speed of light. Now I understand. So you're saying if you can physically stretch and you had power to do so. To just manipulate Stretch or contract space. Contract, space. I bring California to, to across the street. You walk across, I walk the, across street, the street, and then you push it back away push again. Back California oh. back to where it was, and I'm there. And to... that wouldn't uh, blow everything up, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it would have all kinds of unforeseen consequences. <laughs> okay. But, but you, you would be in what used to be California. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn more about black holes. Everybody loves some black holes. Oh, yeah. So let's find out what Christopher Nolan had to say about working with Kip Thorne on Interstellar. We were talking about the whole, and much like McConaughey's character, because I put this into the dialogue of the film, at one point I said, well, wait a second, you're saying it's not a hole, it's a sphere. And he's like, of course it's a sphere, you know, it's a hole in three dimensions. I'm like, no, there's no of course about that for the, <laughs> the rest of us. Oh, hence you explicated it. Right, hence, right. no, because I was like, if we can make somebody understand, some of the audience understand the way I suddenly did in that moment of, you can have a hole in three dimensions? Yes. That's a terrifying concept and the really fact that cool. You can approach it from any direction and disappear inside of it. Yeah, really cool. I mean, that because a I... hole in the in the pavement, you know, a manhole cover. That's a hole you fall through. Yeah. But that's a hole in a surface, which is a, a circle. Well, a we... hole in three dimensions is a sphere, and so that was was brilliantly done. 
and gave you a feeling that it's, it's a hole that you can enter from any direction. When black holes were first discovered mathematically, nobody thought they were real. Nobody yeah. thought there'd be any way nature could make such a thing, right? Why and isn't everything been, dis why hasn't everything been destroyed by a, a black hole? Eaten by a black hole. Yeah, it, why doesn't everything, yeah. why are we, yeah, that's are a, we that's in one a, now? Yeah. That is a false reputation. So if you were to replace the sun with a black hole <laughs> okay. right so, now, so, so she's we PR would be agent. fine. <laughs> we would Jana, be the, fine. Jana, the PR agent for black holes, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's not their actual <laughs> reputation so, here. They never were, did that. If you replaced the sun with a black hole, we would be, I mean, aside from having no Sunlight. It would be cold and dark. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> we would wouldn't be, be sucked in and destroyed. We would not be sucked in any. We oh, would be on exactly <laughs> the same. We are falling into the sun. The sun is sucking us up oh. just incredibly slowly. Oh, well, and so tell if you were it, to thank put, you. <laughs> like the sun will blow up long before that happens. Oh, okay. We'll collide with Andromeda long before that happens. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so this is a lot of good stuff. We'll actually kill ourselves long before that happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah just put your your priorities in right. order. Our civilization, yeah. but maybe you know, cats might survive. <laughs> My favorite thing about black holes is what it does to your body when you fall in. As you get drawn into a black hole, uh, feet first, you're, it begins to stretch you apart because your feet are drawn to the black hole faster than the top of your head is. And then you get taller and taller until you snap into two pieces when the forces of gravity become greater than the molecular forces that hold your flesh together. And then those two pieces themselves experience this. It's called the tidal force of gravity, and they snap and they become one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Then you're a stream of particles descending down to the abyss. And meanwhile, you're, the, the fabric of space and time funnels, gets narrow, so that you are not only stretched head to toe, you are extruded through the fabric of space and time like toothpaste through a tube. One way to die by falling into a black hole.